Welcome to the best of first person episodes from Phantoms and Monsters. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of all future uploads. The Boy's Alien Encounter It was late night in late October early November of 1975. I was a 10-year-old child. At that time I was going through a late bedwetting phase, and remember I was determined to end that embarrassment. I awoke for the second or third night in time to relieve myself and remember being happy and proud that I caught it in time again. As my eyes creaked open slightly I saw movement in the room and at least what I thought were African American kids in my room moving around. I remember thinking that the only thing they could steal of any value was my prized small black and white TV that was on my dresser next to my bed. As you can imagine at this time my heart was pounding through my chest and just wanted them to take the TV and leave. I creaked my eyes open ever so slightly as not to be noticed, and was shocked to realize that they weren't afros, which were common at that time, but were whole heads. I can't really express my thoughts of that instant realization when I saw who was really in the room at that time, other than how in a nanosecond I went from there's no such things as aliens to, oh, my god they're real, to what do they want? At that time there was no such things as greys or anything similar to what has been so defined into pop culture today. Being late October early November there was a harvest moon, and I had a fairly large picture window in my room, which lead to some fair amount of ambient room lighting, which I shared with my five-year-old brother, who slept in an adjacent bed next to mine. During this event I was creaking my eyes open enough as not to be noticed, laying on my back when I woke up and my bed covers were at my waist. All I wanted was to get my bed cover up to my head, so I was ever so slowly and methodically creeping them up during this entire event. As not to be noticed. There was a larger one that stood against the wall directly across from the foot of my bed that just stared at me. There was another knelt down on the opposite side of my brother's bed, and what I thought at the time was that he was doing something to his arm. I my head at the time my mind was reeling, my parents' room was directly behind me, and if I screamed my father would come running in. I remember thinking that the one next to my brother I was taller than and equated him to being in my grade, remember I was 10. So if he came over to me my big plan was to jump up and dive on him and scream for my dad. The one against the wall just standing there I remember as being a grade or two older than me, and he would probably do something before my dad to get in. I remember thinking I could end the whole debate that are we alone in the universe, and the weight of that thought being succumbed to he's killing my brother, and not being able to muster the internal strength to do something. My next thought was that if he comes over to me he can't put a needle in me so I started to tear up, and that diffused my sight to what was happening in the room. Then the one, that was knelt next to my brother, got up and came at me, pure horror as my eyes were teared, and he rounded my brother's bed, and in one motion knelt down on his right knee, and in one motion, opened his toolkit and kind of flipped, and twisted his left wrist and reached in. At that very moment I couldn't hold it anymore and thought needle, and I made a audible pre-cry wail. The face that the creature made still haunts me today. Honesty. It's the same face people make, when they make a surprise mistake a eek I did something embarrassing facial expression. His mouth was just a slit so, when he made that expression his face rippled, and wrinkled like a old man. Immediately whatever he was taking out of his box which was a really weird shape then but not now, it was hexagonal with a diagonal opening and handle, put it back in got up, and they marched out. Again another part of this is memory, that has crept me out is how they moved like the military, and moved or better said marched out of my room. I was shocked, and with unreal timing as I looked down the hallway, when they passed my parents' room two more came out, and filed in line with such precision, and marched down the hall and all turned down the stairs out of my sight. Again I must stress the timing was if they were one. Needless to say I didn't sleep the rest of the night. My younger brother was fine in the morning, and no one in my family knew anything of the night's event. I lived near a large metropolitan area at the time, and our house was the only house surrounded by 260 acres of woods. I only told a handful of people since then and find it very difficult and seriously doubt many of these accounts I read of abductions myself. Ironic isn't it? They were very very real, and I wish I'd dreamt it but I didn't. 
My impression then, and my life of the events of that night, is that these beings are cold and indifferent to us, basically they are not our enemies, but most certainly aren't our friends. There might be a very good reason our government has kept this secret for so long. I wish it was just a strange dream. I'm 23 years old, and this is something that I need to get off of my chest. It still haunts me, and I just need people to know about it. A few years ago I was living at my grandpa's house in the hills of Clear Lake, California. He worked out of town and was only at the house a few times a month, so I was barely secluded. Lake County is, for the most part, a very rural area. My house was on the top of a hill near the highway, but still very quiet. Now, I've always had trouble sleeping and I had actually gotten to bed at a reasonable hour that night, but I woke up around 4 am feeling restless. I wasn't surprised at this behavior, it happened often around the time, so I stepped outside to get some fresh air. I had been hearing strange things outside around my house that week, so decided to grab my flashlight. I mean hearing strange things I mean like footsteps and almost guttural noises, growls and low grunts. I thought it was maybe a deer? A bobcat? A cougar? Whatever. I wanted to scare it away, or at least just see what it was. But to my surprise that night when I shined my light out at where the noise was coming from, I saw glowing eyes and something stood up. Tall, at least it seemed to me. It was about three feet taller than the grass around it, which was probably about four feet tall itself. It seemed mad and I was so scared that I couldn't even scream. I wanted to and tried because I had family that lived nearby, I thought maybe they could see what I was seeing, or maybe I could scare this thing away from me. But I could get myself to make a noise, like something was blocking me. I tried hard to yell as loud as I could, nothing came out. And then I remember getting a very good look at this thing. Its skin was brownish, light brown, splotched with dark brown, with kind of a gray shade to it. It seemed to have holes in its body on its shoulder, arms, neck, chest. It had a humanoid frame ridges on its arms, legs, chest and head. Its head was larger than normal, and so were its eyes, almost almond shaped, but still kind of rounded. The skin seemed like shark skin, texture wise, or like what elephant skin without all the wrinkles would look. After I had tried to scream I found myself stuck staring at its eyes, frozen in fear, standing on my deck in my boxers, that's actually an important detail, and its eyes went from pitch black to having kind of human eyes. A round pupil and cornea, except it turned amber, vibrant amber and spurred up like a flame. Then I blacked out. I remember feeling myself being moved like I weighed nothing, as if I was a child. I remember some dialogue even, but that's a different story. I woke up the next morning with no immediate recollection of what happened, found it strange that I was on the top of my covers, fully clothed, and facing the wrong way on my bed. I told myself this was only a dream until I started thinking about it more. Things don't add up. They still don't. Someone please help me make sense of this. Uncontrollable entity encounter. I felt a disturbance in my side. I began to think about alien related topics, such as telepathic communication with beings, possible abductions contact in the past, etc. Against my control, I walked to a chair, one I usually don't sit in, in my living room and gazed out the back door. I noticed a bright glowing gold craft appear in the sky, shortly followed by another beside it. I ran outside to stare at them. They displayed movement and light in which I've never thought possible of any aircraft. I noticed they shut their lights off, and I turned around and noticed my parents inside my house. I went back inside to tell them the great news, but they dismissed it. My mom then left and my stepdad went to bed. I kept staring out the back door, and I saw them again. I ran to my room to grab the dislocated scope of a gun to get a better look at them. When I went back outside, they were glowing very bright, with bursts of light. I walked out into a field to get closer. As I gazed upon the crafts, I felt an inner joy, a great bliss, in which I've never felt before. I periodically lost control of my body, and it seemed as if I offered myself to the crafts. 
I don't have much memory from that, but the next thing I remember was me holding up the scope to get a glimpse of the second craft, it seemed to come closer to me. I viewed it with great detail, it looked like nothing I could even imagine. It also seemed to let out a white light, which seemed as if it was aimed in my direction. I then took the scope away and saw beings maybe 15 feet away from me. I became overwrought with fear, and I began to hyperventilate. I turned to run, but I didn't make it far. I found myself unable to control myself, and I turned around to stare at them more. It appeared as if one came towards me, and at that moment, I managed to turn and run away. I remained outside and called a close friend, emotionally breaking down. I still noticed the beings, but I looked away for a few seconds and they were gone, and I saw the crafts in the sky again. As I write this, I grow uncontrollably tired, and I feel the disturbance in my side once more. Ghostly alien entity appears in bedroom. I do not recall hearing any strange noises, though I am used to hearing rumbles due to my proximity to a major street in my town. Many trucks rumble by late at night. It was a strange night to start. Before getting in the bed it appeared as though the moon and stars were in the wrong location in the sky. I dismissed it, because I usually do not wreck such things, it just felt out of place. Anyway, I was in my bed, and I saw something just walk through the wall from outside. I live on the second floor. It looked sorta of like a floating pale double S. It was strange, I dismissed this too, and decided it was due to my exhaustion. It was at this point, that I felt like someone else was in the room with me. I woke up my girlfriend and told her, she just rolled over, and went back to sleep almost immediately. I attempted to go back to sleep, but this being got right in my face, as if testing to see, if I could detect it. I could not see it fully, mainly like a ghostly outline and some facial features. It was hunched over, so I estimate, that it may have stood around 3 to 4 feet tall. It had an oblong shaped head with huge eyes. I could only see an outline of the creature, it was invisible mostly. As it was almost directly in front of my face, my right eye began to feel strange, as if I just got over a migraine headache, but it only felt uncomfortable on the right eye. It sort of looked like a Zeta type being a grey alien, but it was smaller than I would expect, and it appeared much skinnier. I didn't feel threatened by it, but it did startle me, when it got right in my face. It appeared as though I was walking through the object, my dog's kennel, right next to my bed, to get in my face. I asked it to leave and it did. Needless to say I did not sleep very well last night. Not out of fear, just perplexed. This is Lon Strickler. If you like this program, it would help us if you would give it a thumbs up. Then subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notification when we upload new first person encounters. We have many more to come very soon. And by the way, if you have a suggestion or an experience of your own, please leave a comment.